Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Raise your cans in the air. So it's UFC versus Cloud9. Is it going to be a feels good man story or is it going to be C9 winning? What is this, their third in a row, Cyberpower? Something, su something stupid. Yeah. Some silly number that they've won in a row. Not only this, but the other cups that are online that they get. Yeah, they were first in ECS. They won DreamHack Denver. They won Power Masters. Obviously, EPL didn't go so well, but that's been going on for months. And some of those games, they had to use their coach and didn't have their five solidified. So that's a little bit harder to read. But yeah, it's been a lot of success lately for Cloud9. That's certainly the case. They want to keep that going. We do see them just kind of setting up passively at middle, using Stewie kind of probe around underpass. And actually, Rix is going to get aggressive at B Apartments, but Skadoodle is waiting for him. And he and Stewie will connect to try to put him down, but actually, Rix somehow escapes. What? And with 70 HP at that, so he's actually gained some information on some positioning and didn't really get punished too hard for it. Like, I would have thought he would have died there for sure. Well, so you're not going to give too much chase, and he's even going to hold for another angle. He's going to try and fight this. Ronnie's re-pushing. He's a man of glimpses of wisdom and insanity, as finally, you will get punished for that aggression. Scooter will take him down, they will waltz into the B-bomb site, and Exotic, try as he may, there's not much you can really do. He'll call for rotations, Kusta, keep in mind, has a smoke kit, so he's going to be heading towards Catwalk. They're going to wait till these players and Cat are in position, and then they are going to go. And already, it's automatic to find both Catwalks, Stewie taps him, Scooter finds a last. You blink, you miss it, and good thing, I don't blink. Yeah, that's uh, about as clean of a victory as you can get. It's Cloud9 only losing a total of 48 HP amongst all five of their players in that round, so they were able to capture B once they got rid of Rix, who did definitely hang around a lot longer than I expected. Uh, they were able to just kind of shut everything down, cutting off all the rotations. No real chance at a retake for UFC. And Cloud9 will, of course, be getting the AKs out, a couple of Galils as well, a little bit of utility, all head armored. Just a deco here for UFC. No armor behind this. Just trying to save up their money for the opening gun round. Looks like they want to go straight to double op as well. The fact that Kusta only has a USP, didn't even upgrade his pistol, leads me to believe they might want to go double op right away. But we'll see. It's on the table. A C9 will slowly but surely gain this lovely mid control as it's a stack as we can see. On towards the A site, leaving just exotic alone towards B. But it's looking more and more likely that that bomb's gonna rotate all the way around through mm -hmm. spawn and go towards A main. Yeah, this is about as default as it gets for Cloud9. You know, Rush working outside A, Stewie kind of working the underpass, Rush working top mid. But as you said, that bomb's now pivoting over towards A ramp. Stewie does have control of connector. And so an A split certainly seems to be on the horizon. Stewie will clear in this corner. Imagine taking the tap, and there you have it. Cutler's actually going to get the best of him. He gets both of these players with his eagle. That's Kusta and Sandwich catches Rush, and all of a sudden, they have rifles to work with, and Skadoodle needs to wait for automatic to get into position. But he hangs on with his rifle, showing you his AK can stand its own. It is against our armored opponents. Well, those are two big frags to get. Exotic holding the cross on 25, no time to run back. And not a lot more time to give to automatic. And Exotic, if he can catch this bomb, there's a chance. It's just looking to double peek him, and it's a lovely double peek. Skadoodle stays alive. We'll get into himself a little 300 cheeky dollars. As C9 yeah. will get the 2 0. Not bad for UFC. Cutler getting a couple kills with the Deagle and Connector. Gave themselves a chance to win, but at the end of the day, no armor. So it's going to be a lot harder for them to take fights since Skadoodle. Always been very good in clutch situations. He finds himself in a lot of late round scenarios because of kind of his more passive role in the team given the amount of aggro riflers are on C9 so he does find himself in 1vx's or swan numbers a lot and he usually does pretty well was able to save the day in that one as again UFC onto essentially a full save there are a couple of P250s sprinkled around Cutler does have a deeg but again really saving up for that real first buy round making sure they get a really good buy there as again, it's very default for Cloud9. And I'll say this, Cloud9 usually aren't a default team. They usually like to do fast-paced executes on this map. They use, they really use, excuse me, usually love to just work quickly, but they've been a lot slower and more patient in some of these anti-eco rounds. I'm not sure this will carry over, though. I feel like when the rifle rounds start, you're going to see Cloud9 picking up the pace, but they could be looking to kind of expand their game and be able to, you know, be diverse in their pacing. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Cutler with a dirty deeg again. Well, alrighty there, Cutler. Didn't look he was a deagle player. Clearly pr proving me wrong. 
That's Kusta. Well, kiss Tarek. Again, that's two rounds in a row as USP has gotten a kill. And he'll escape with an AK. C9. Just getting caught up by the awkward positions of UFC. Another USP kill. It's on a... It's Exotic, who picks up that AK and finds two, and it's just Skadoodle to clutch with an AK, tagged a 16, and bagged by a P250. That's a round you don't see C9 lose often. Awkward no, positions, not at all. I guess. It's also just being a little bit sloppy. I feel like they were just feeding a lot of 1v1 battles to these unemployed members, like, you know, Tarek trying to come through the smoke at stairs, a guy right there with the pistol, free frag for him. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of free kills that happened just off of C9 being a little bit maybe overly cautious. Like, I feel like that's one of the round where you just kind of, you would just want to bunch up and want to do something fast and just make sure you trade off of each other. I mean, you're going up against a bunch of unarmored opponents. As long as you're together and you're trading, you should more often than not win those fights. You should be overwhelming them, but instead they kind of went a little bit one by one and kind of trickled in and it gave UFC a chance and they win that. And look, they got four free guns. There's four AKs being carried over for UFC. They have to spend any money to get these rifles. Gives them plenty of money to just buy utility instead. And it means that they can save their money for, you know, a rainy day. Meanwhile, Clown and R are going to be picking up the pace, kind of as we noted earlier, looking to get a connector quickly. Cutler, maybe in a world of hurt, they're about to bust through that smoke and connector. Lighter balcony, and Cutler will get caught out. It's a rush to clean it up. They'll push forward and get window room control plus jungle. This is a hard retake for UFC without having window or jungle control. It makes yeah, retaking that is just from CT extremely difficult. Yeah, you can see three of them just bunched up here, all trying to fight from tick. But they do have a flank coming in from Rick, so that could maybe open something up. We'll see coming in. Ethan dodges the flash. It's automatic doing a lovely job of baiting and keeping them on it. Skadoodle pops the skull of Ethan. As Kusto will pick up his position and eat some damage himself. He gets the molly out. Drix has taken his sweet darn ass time coming in through Palace. Yeah, way too slow. Yeah. Uh, way I too I slow to have a chance. I didn't want to say the A word, but you know what? It, it had to be said. I mean, this dude took forever to get into this position. And perhaps... UFC didn't really want to go for it, and Rix was saying, you know what, let's just save. And his teammates kept fighting towards CT. Yeah, it certainly back, felt so. that way, right? It felt like if they really wanted to go for it, that, that Rix was the ace up the sleeve. He was the guy that had to make a play. He was on a big flank. They didn't really have any, you kind of noted this, they didn't really have a way into jungle uh, or connector. Like, Cloud9 did a really good job attacking from connector, maintaining those positions, and making sure that any CTs looking to retake were going to have to funnel through CT spawn. Um, so yeah, Rix was really the one that was going to have to do something, and he was just way too far out. By the time he got there, everyone else was already fallen, so definitely not the best of coordination on retakes, but again, to be expected on a team that's had very limited time together as a five, you'd imagine. And again, you don't even know if they're looking to play together long term. It was more of, hey, we have a spot for this tournament, we still have our core three, so let let's throw something together, basically, I think is the thought. As we did have a little bit of a technical pause coming. It looks like Exotic's ping is uh, having some issues, but he's reconnected and it looks like his ping starting to drop. So hopefully we should be getting this thing right back going. As we do have Cloud9 up three to one. But again, USC has a lot of money because they had basically four free guns last round. So still able to get a good buy and that double op does come out. Well, Exotic's been impressing me as Ethan will hold the secondary one. Now that's actually a spawn based thing. I think he either wants to pick a ramp or go connector. Well, Exotic has a little bit of an off spawn for Windows. So I'm excited to see where Ethan's gonna be heading with it. He is number three on your mini map. It looks like it is going to be an a ramp pick, so that's just purely what it was based on. Well, the thing is, Kusta had a really good spawn to take an op somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, and usually you would have thought of Kusta being the secondary op, or even if Exotic's going to main it, you would think that you know, Kusta would still, you know, put one to use as well, but it doesn't wind up happening that way. As they set up Exotic to watch B Apartments, allows a little bit more freedom of Rix to kind of be more involved over towards middle. As he is going to be inside ladder room, trying to see if he can't defend against Cloud9's mid control, who are definitely lining up a smoke for a window and looking to exercise control of this area and turn it into something. Rush actually playing really passive towards A. He's all the way in T spawn. Kind of makes you feel like they want to do something more mid B based at this point, as it is Rush actually coming into the apartment. Broken, Molly behind Rick, Molly in front of him, and he gets caught. Lovely clear, actually with breaking the vent through the smoke, knowing exactly where to throw that molly, and the secondary one, so Rix was kind of stuck, and he gets caught, as the op of Exotic gets spotted here towards Cat, he jumps sight, gets a pick, but he needs to stay alive, and he'll peek into his death, it's Skadoodle's, <laughs> anything else, his AK to find the opening, and he even finds the second, Skadoodle, 
I mean, he's having a banger of a tournament, to be honest. I mean, it's very early into this game, but he's still mm -hmm. showing that he's got it. I mean, he's been on point with even with rifles throughout this in the tournament. Yeah, really well done by Cloud9. It's one of those things where, you know, once Cloud9 gets mid control and they get that kill on the Rixen ladder, they realize that, hey, there's only one guy B, and they have a smoke up on connector, on stairs side, so there's really no way for players on A to get any vision. And for all the players that A know, they could be doing a mid-A split. They don't have any information there. They don't have mid-control anymore or no real vision on mid with Rick's going down. Unless they push through A ramp or Palace, they don't really know who's sitting outside A either. So they can't really rotate. And then at that point, all the pressure is on Exotic because they can just storm up Cat with their connector smoke and just swarm him and, and just overwhelm him in the site. And that's exactly what happens. So you see, just have to look to say these guns it will be Cutler and Ethan able to retain the AWP and M4, but... Cloudline are starting to build up a good lead here early in the half, and money is becoming low on USC, so even though they've saved two guns, not a whole lot they can buy around it. Are they going to go in? That's the question. It looks like it's reserved, knowing that they'll have that three-round loss. So it's just Ethan, the op Cutler with the M4. And C9 are going to go back to this mid-control. Very deep ball C9. I think they love to do this. Very standard. Yeah, I'm actually used to them doing more fast-paced executes early around. So the fact that they're playing a lot of more slow defaults is different. And it also kind of illustrates uh, the fact that some of these guys on Cloud9 had to make some sacrifices. You know, guys like Rush and Stewie used to be entry fraggers. You know, f you know, respectively, Stewie for Cloud9 and Rush for Optic. But you see both of them playing peripheral roles now. But once they actually go for the execute, these players still get into the mix. It can still be helpful in, you know, entering, getting into a bomb site. So it doesn't necessarily matter, but it just kind of highlights some of the adjustments some of them have had to make to create this super team. So he will catch Gusta pushing out of B axe. He'll flash and he's gonna keep going. Looks like he wanted to. He is actually is just gonna turn around. See if anyone else was gonna face him. But actually, I think he just wanted out. to create pressure, kind of keep bricks in place, even force the rotation as well. This opens up a bomb site, makes it a little bit more vulnerable. Forces the defense to split up. So I actually like the idea he kind of put the pressure but didn't commit. They'll flash over. Exotic is playing Ninja. Actually, excuse me, Firebox. It's so similar on the map. As Automatic finds his teammate, are they going to check Firebox? They're not. Exotic set up for this knife. He will get the right click, pick up the AK, shoot his teammate. Can't find the player in sight. Cutler takes a bullet for his troubles, but Ooh. still is able to find that bomb player. And it's just Automatic. And look at this. Ethan's out of there. Exotic won that round for their team. He really did. He got the bomb down. Like, Cloudland took a long time committing to a bomb site there. So, any one thing that went wrong was going to, you know, really derail them. They only had, I think, maybe like 12, 15 seconds when they actually started hitting A. So, once Exotic gets the kill, I think there was only maybe 10 or 11 seconds left on the clock. So, Cloudland really had to scramble. And the, where the bomb fell at, it was out in the open. So, they couldn't even quickly collect the bomb and plant and save cover after they traded out Exotic. They gave, I don't know who it was, he was on stairs, he was able to get the kill on Rush, he was going for the bomb, so, yeah, the, the t clock just became Cloud9's worst enemy in that round, and now you do see them looking to shift gears, as they're going to be going towards that trend they're more well known for, which are these fast-paced set pieces, as you see all the utility being lined up, as they start getting into the A-bomb site. Ethan, does he go up, does he go down? He is just gonna stay down and Rush check sandwich, Terra gets caught jumping, and Ethan thought he killed him, but he was pulled it up. Can he get the third? No, but damage is well dealt. Well dished out. As Cutler will stay behind the smokes, the bomb plants actually go down in a rare spot front default. As all of a sudden, it's Skadoodle with an automatic. Automatic knows he has to make a play on low HP. That's his third as he pushes in. And now, he has to get an ace. The bomb's planted for him, and it's Exotic and Kusa, and they know where he is. At least, the more time he ticks by and he sits here... The more they may think he's gone CT or something similar. But now he lets his presence know and he sprays it up, lines it up. Exotic's on the bomb and Kusa's holding his ankle. Oh, how does he do that? Finds a defuser and the last bullet, or if not close to it, catches Kusta. Oh my god, that just happened, didn't it?
Oh, man. That just goes to show you, Cloud9, they got a bunch of playmakers. You never can count them out, and it's an ace for automatic. And to be fair, though, there's some luck involved there for 100% honest. I mean, he was definitely spamming through. He never even reloaded his AK, so he barely had any bullets left after his first initial spam on the bomb. And then they just happened to kind of line up for him, and he gets a couple of quick kills with his last few bullets. And... Man, oh man, Cloud9, they, they ripped that one out from underneath USU, so you should have definitely had that round. They were playing it really well. The entering for Cloud9 was not very good. They prioritized Sandwich, which gave Ethan some free frags from their balcony, and USU were working with the man advantage all the way through, and then somehow, some way, Automatic still pulls it out. And now USC are on a force by. <laughs> My goodness. Jeez. Love him or hate him. Impressive nonetheless, C9. We'll go back into this 1 3 1 default that we've been running a couple times right now. I thought my phone was ringing. Someone just steam called me. I'm getting trolled. Chewy pushing up through connector will catch Kusta. It looks like he is content to just fall back. Stewie just going into a CZ here. Keep in mind, UFC invested all in here. Yep. Again, it's Cutler playing close towards connector. He got two in a similar situation before. Will really he have the same fate? He catches Tarek. A dink actually onto Stewie, but it's automatic to save his life. As Ethan, unspotted in sandwich, it should get cleared here? No. Again, an overlook towards the sandwich position. But Rush, he likes PB&Js, so he will clear it. As Exotic is the last man standing with an op. Catches Rush, a 1v2, doable. Has a flash to work with, but no kit. Times his enemy. And no armor either. So that's going to be aim punch being a huge problem if he even gets tagged up a little bit in the middle of the duel. It's also hard to save. I mean, if he backs off to try to go back towards CT spawn, I mean, there's T's right there who are going to be looking to catch him. But obviously saving the op would be huge because UFC has no money into the next round. So at least having this would give them something to work with. And it looks like he will backpedal. And it looks like Cloud9 won't be too eager to chase. So I guess he will be able to carry this over. But C9 will build up their lead to 6-2. 6-2, to two, how about you? As UFC with two round loss, they don't go in on this off, I don't imagine. And no, Exotic got a good spawn. That's yeah, nice. I mean, I think bit. it might be worth... Mm, maybe he small armors behind this, and I, I imagine some P250s come out, but they can't really afford to force around it. And in fact, he will just go glass cannon. They want to stay around that 2k range, make sure they get a nice full buy in the next round. Oh, the speed at which Cloud9 is attacking, though, really catching Kusa trying to jump around. Exotic's still an underpass, though, at the side. They haven't realized that yet. He could still maybe... Kind of be a snake in the grass type character in this. I don't even think they know he's underpass. Nope. Yet. Uh, yet now they do, and he's dead. <laughs> just holding for that connector push. Rix gets the op, gets the gift that's given to him, and we'll just peace out on his sled. This is going to be seven to two, but with three round loss. And if you can hang on to the op, it always helps. Oh, that would be huge. Yeah. Would, they otherwise probably won't have an op next round unless he saves this one. So that would definitely be. Good. And the thing is, Cloud9 probably don't want to throw too many bodies after him. Their money's still not the best. They've been reset a couple of times. So. They may just kind of look to sit back, let them have it, sure, make sure they get their money in order. And I mean, all in all, it's been still pretty dominant from Cloud9. I mean, really the only rounds that UFC have won is one is off of kind of a crazy save situation that they still wind up winning just due to like playing really good spots and Cloud9 being a bit sloppy and then the other round they won was off the clock right so they really haven't had a convincing round win yet this very easily could be 9-0 for Cloud9 I feel like Cloud9's Oops. beat themselves the two rounds they've lost a little overthinking yeah just uh a couple of little couple of little mishaps really Darn silenced USPs. As Exotic will completely solo a site. As they get aggressive towards mid, Exotic is going to be able to find Tarek. So they push Catwalk, the trade. Actually, no trades, excuse me. They will find two clean opening picks. Kusta's on 4 HP for it, but he's not bothered. So you know, I get the plant. These post plants are going to be hard. Just look at the utility still on the side of UFC. Oh, yeah, so much. 
the C9 will use one of their two remaining smokes. The other one will go towards Sandwich. And this is a tricky situation for Skidoodle and Co. Two players under balcony. Rush will hang on to his Molly. He's just going to throw a front bench. Now he's kind of in a weird spot. Skidoodle is forced to play front default. But I'm caught out and blind. It's just Rush. 1v4. They know where he is. And smoked out. Look at that. That almost got terrifying. They lined up for him perfectly. As Rix will get the defuse. It came down to like the absolute last second. He gets oh, one yeah, kill there. Maybe if, yep. he pulls it out. If Rush gets one kill there, the, the climb wins the round. Absolutely. Because it got a little bit tricky because even though UFC had the man advantage or two man advantage and they had a lot of utility to retake with, Cloud9 actually still had a lot of utility left in the post plant. So they were able to kind of respoke spawn, respoke jungle. They even put a, a Molly behind the smoke at bench and so no one could really push that smoke. They had to play from stairs in CT and wait things out. So it did come down to the wire a little bit on that retake. But USC do get it done and they finally get to me their first convincing round victory like they made a play on cat they aggressed they caught stewie they played retake a they played smart and so that was a, a solid victory for them but can they keep it going or will they get reset again they've invested into double op they got one of those ops for free i think they both have, i just say they might have both of them for free i think kusta picked up skadoodle's op and exotic already had one so they actually didn't have to dip into this but still, a reset would certainly hurt. And the Max already on the way to doing that, perhaps. But Ethan with the trade. And Kusta with the op. Good flash, actually. Stops him pulling the trigger, but he is going to push on the site. And it's like Skadoodle immediately answers back, but it's just Tarek and Skadoodle. The bomb's going to go down, and Skadoodle has to cover. As there's one player flanking all the way around, it's Ethan. It'll be a little late. But they're going to give them time, knowing they have kits, knowing they still have a ton of utility. And Tarek, going to push up here, really catch Ricks, catches him jumping, but can't fully commit to that. Skidoodle will deal with Exonic, that one's Market. Market's cleared, that pressure's alleviated. But how ready are they going to be for Ethan? Skidoodle hears him, and Ethan's alone, catches Tarek down to 1 HP, that Molly will seal the deal. It'll hit him! It's a hit, there's no animation oh. for it! As Ethan, will he clear the corner? He will! <laughs> Ethan, an impact in the chest and cleans it up on Van. Not every day do you see that. Oh, man. And this man. is twice, actually. He just Last pegged online them. cup, too, they did this. Just pegged him with it. Wasn't even the fire that killed them. You rarely him see that. You There's, rarely see those you one you HP rarely kills. See it so much. Yeah. There's no animation for it. Yeah, the there's corner, nothing. nothing. It, it, that's crazy, man. I remember in Source and stuff, it used to just be like a giant flashbang icon that would just cover up the entire top of your screen if you <laughs> picked someone with one. It was insane, but still so rare. And actually won them the round is even what's more rare about it. Usually when something like that happens, it's just like this chance funny thing but it doesn't really have impact on the round. That won them the round, actually, because I thought Skadoodle was playing that really well. Like, he didn't let the apartment's flank catch on to him. He got a couple of kills with the op. He was looking like he was going to win that round for Cloud9. And then that happened. <laughs> Upset with that is a just a flat out B hit. Good trades for UFC. As the nade will land on Skadoodle. Tarek has to be careful as he cross back bench. As he stay towards the pillar. Exotic's just gonna post up on it. There's the Molly. Automatic's fighting back bench, and this is a bait for Rush. Will they check Rush's position? Kusta's first out. Kusta's eliminated. Tarek gets one of his own. It's Ethan. Can he bring it back again? It's a one v one against Tarek. And he wants revenge. No impact needs and play it. As Derek just peeks with the CZ and says no. You only get one. And that's the previous round. C984. Yeah, because again, that's that's a little bit more trademark Cloud9. Kind of featuring the same strength that the old optic with Tarek and Rush used to have, which is, you know, we have a lot of aggressive riflers. We have a lot of guys who do entry work. Let's just swarm a bond site with all those guys. And if one entry fragger goes down, guess what? We have three more to come in and do the exact same thing. It's kind of the meme when, when Tarek and Rush first joined that Cloud9 put on their webpage was that very thing. Still came close, though. UFC battled back a little bit, but just couldn't finish it off. And now they have to take a full save. Saving for these last rounds of the half, and that's giving Cloud9 a chance to keep extending their lead with ease. As Kusa does bring down one, but it's still being mopped up by Cloud9 across the rest of the map. And nothing Cutler and Kusa should be able to do in the situation. That Molly, of course, Kusa up and into the ladder room. Takes a little bit of damage for it. And he's just going to try to escape. Just the mask is dropped, but gets spotted. Down to 15. Stewie, in the meantime, has cleared out completely the B site. But Cloud9 are leaving the bomb. They want to hunt Kusa, who is spinning in a sweet screen. And will go down automatic. You know, his days were numbered. Z9 went away from double digits on their T side. 
Indeed. Again, this is, was the pick of Cloud9, and they're probably one of the best Mirage teams in the world, so kind of an expected first half display. But USC, let's we'll see if they can muster up a little bit of something here on these last couple of rounds on their CT side. They will have a decent buy into this round, including an op on Exotic, who's been pretty good this tournament. Young guy, I think he's 16. He was on the CLG Academy, so he's been kind of a name that maybe people have eyes on. As Kusta, he, uh, he got stuck out there. Did not really get what he wanted. At least there was a, able to get one kill. But now C9 take mid control and they have the man advantage. Rips has had pretty much no luck in the ladder room. Either mollied or cleared, or his teammates just fall so quickly there's not a lot of time or room for him to make a play. As it is not, it blind towards the top connector. May catch Skidoodle. No, it's Eric Rip. who holds his back and Skidoodle hits one of those. Well, you take the shot because you think you're dead, and the next thing you know, you're still alive. So it was, yeah. it was one of those lucky ones. It's one of those things where all he could do was no scope and hope for the best, yeah. and it did work out. So there you have it. And then, like you said, Tarek had its back, caught that cat flank. They can always be the trickiest thing about attacking connectors, worrying about your backside to cat. That's like the most important threat you have to handle, either with utility or having an extra player with you to be able to cover that. And Cloud9 is able to manage to work through it. Now they're up 10-4. Again, another really rough buy here for UFC to end the half. And Cloud9 already getting some mid control here. A couple of kills going UFC's way, however, and Cutler's still somehow alive. Not for long, I would imagine. Molly and then tapped as exotic. The smoke completely bloomed perfectly, so he can't really see much of anything. And Stewie will just wait. Rex is hoping someone continues this push towards Cat. The C9 will just sit on the map control and trades. They'll be content with. As that's not where the exotic one on that smoke to go. We want to go top connector. To give a little bit of a fake. As Stewie's getting challenged. The exotic won't check his corners. And it's just Rex, and he'll go down as could do to 11 4. Pretty comfortable. Comfortable is a good word for that half for C9. Yeah. Indeed it was, but we'll be taking a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you the rest of the first map of the Grand Finals, so stay tuned. My name is Trick2G and I use CyberPower PC powered by Intel. Let's go! Well, C9, no big surprise, will end at 11 at 4, but perhaps UFC will have something to say on their T side. Ethan, Coming up with a couple big clutches, Exotic finding some picks, but ultimately it just fell apart at the seams. Yeah. Even of the four rounds that UFC won, two of those four were basically Cloud9 beating themselves. Like, one was off of, you know, running out of time. The other off of just, you know, losing to an eco. So, yeah, it, it, there wasn't a whole lot there from UFC. This very easily could be 13-2. Um... Just having a rough time. Cloud9 typically were really able to do whatever they wanted. Like they did some slower defaults into mid control and just corked off of that. They did some faster paced executes and just brute forced away into bomb sites. There were a couple of rounds that were kind of close, so that came down to 1v1. So maybe you could even give credit to USC to saying maybe they could have won a couple of more rounds because of that. But at the end of the day, everyone on Cloud9 has at least 10 kills. Uh, and their top frag has 16, so a pretty good frag distribution over there for C9. Meanwhile, just, you know, a lot of players struggling over on the UFC side. No other way to shake it. Exotic, who's been really good throughout the tournament, has quieted down here in this uh, game thus far. Granted, it's hard to really put up big numbers when you're, you're kind of crumbling as a team, as a whole. And your economy's, you know, been pretty rough the whole way through. But it's time for new beginnings. It's pistol round. It's a chance to rewrite things. You get to start from scratch again. You like making things from scratch? Yeah, I like to cook from like scratch. Like cake? 
I like to cook. Not that particular item that you mentioned, but, you know, just in general. You know the song I'm talking about, right? It's very catchy. No. I'm sorry. Oh, really? I apologize. I feel like that was a good reference, and I just missed it. Bacon or Brady cake. Okay. Well, that's, that's okay. I could be butchering the name, but I think it was... Ah, eh, whatever. Moving on swiftly. Yeah, so UFC's not moving swiftly, though. They've been taking their time in this pistol round, but now they're beginning to gather up. Looks like they're trying to get Kutsu to throw a little bit of a fake on A, smoke on stairs, a couple of flashes into the A side, try to pull a rotation, and then they're going to try to hit B with four players. And so we'll have to see if Cloud9 falls for it or not. Do they over-rotate to A after they hear the utility of Kusta? Or do they hold their ground? And actually, now I'm kind of wondering if I'm wrong, because it seems like they're actually going to be hitting underpass into the A bomb site. Automatics, but to be uh, the man Overwhelmed. The word and knife out and gone. No bullets fired. He is deleted. And the push into the A site will commence. Rush. Now I'm going to push into the site. I'll take the fight with Kusta first. And taking some shots through the corner there. And Stewie, he's not scared. He'll push in. He'll take this fight towards triple. Taking advantage of that smoke that was thrown from UFC. He pushes into default, but it's exotic. They clean both of them up. And this pistol round surely is in the bag of UFC. Skadoodle. Eh, he'll save his armor. 650. Yep. Well then, that's a good pistol round strat. I like that from UFC. Pretty crafty stuff. Essentially, they threw a smoke like right in front of stairs so essentially that allowed them to really just fight in connector and it didn't allow anyone from c9 towards if spawn or sight boxes or anything like that to get any like long range battles with their usps usc could use to cover the smoke to get up close inside the site and put those glocks to use in close range battles which they won pretty much all of them in fact they did win all of them no kills go out for cloud nine there so pretty dominant stuff Again, it's you look at automatic, you're like, wow, you got your knife out. Like, it's probably not the time. Unlucky timing, I guess you could say, in that regard. Yeah. But so many players are like that, man. Like, so many people just feel like they have like some crazy ADHD where they're just freaking like constantly switching guns and stuff, and it, it does hurt you sometimes. A lot of oppers are like that, right? I don't, just in general, shot, I see people out. pulling out their knife and, you know, doing crazy stuff. Uh, usually they do it in safer positions, like what Rush just did there, where there's no chance you're going to get caught. But, I mean, if you're sitting inside Connector, you don't have any information, you could get rushed at any moment. Like, that's not the time. But I don't think it really matters. I think USC were, were destined to win that round anyway, just off their setup. It was really good. If you got it, flaunt it. Isn't that saying? Yep. So if you have a knife, show it off. Is that kind of what you're going for? I think that's just a light tip. But yeah, you can apply it to the knife. As UFC, we'll just own this mid position. As Kusta will send Cutler up and over. Hoping to make no noise as he jumps in, and he won't. Perfectly lined up behind these C9 members, too. All of which have the CZs. And Rush isn't spotted. They might not clear for him. He's at the first. Able to get two. Will he get the reload in time? No, that thing takes so damn long to put the other clip back in. And you know what? Rightfully so. Oh. It's ladder room. It's been his home on D side. Continues to be on D side. Catches automatic. He certainly could have caught exotic. Dewey from ramp. Low HP still finds him. So it's Ricks and Cutler. The bomb is planted for the CT player. So Ricks really has to. Eh, it's kind of planted for him. He might yeah, be able to get behind the box, but it is Rick's alone now. He has to run up. It's going to open enough for him as Tarek will be baiting Stewie here. The nade, just off the mark. Both going to be trying to push him. The spray. No, it's Stewie again with a CZ on 1 HP. No um, kit. Do they have time? Got it? Mm, it's close. I'm not tight. really sure. Okay, yeah. Did just get it. Sorry, my game volume is really low, so I actually yeah. couldn't hear the ticks. I wasn't 100% sure, but it seemed like it had been sitting there for a while. But yeah, Cloud9 does get it. Rush, a big part of that, getting those couple of kills over towards Connector certainly was huge. I thought Rick did a good job catching a player on Cat. I thought that was going to make a difference, but turned out he still gets stuck in a 1v2 he just couldn't come up with. I feel like if he would have thrown his HE grenade earlier, like while they were still kind of sitting on the bomb, he may have gotten to a 1v1, but... Nonetheless, it is Cloud9 
who push it to 12-5. They are the ones that are now fully decked out with rifles, utility, and head armor. A couple of kits. They're the ones sitting pretty right now. Unemployed for Christmas. They have four spot as much as they can here, which is kind of the typical pattern. Until someone wins two in a row, you kind of keep forcing back and forth. So, no exception as US here looking to be really heavy out of Palace in this round. First rush miss. This is critical shots, and Skadoo only gets one. That may come back to bite them. Oh, and Stewie's in a lot of trouble too. The player right behind him. Minus Kusta, plus the dragon. That's what it's. That's what Kusta's P250 said. And Stewie will spin on him. Not spin, spin. The flash will land, of course, or the molly will land. Forced by the firebox and automatic jumping up. Wanted to try to make the jump instead. He spots, and it is just exotic with a deagle. One v three. Someone in chat could be the world's best deagler. Not this round. As it's gonna go 13-5. Yeah, pretty clean retake there from C9. Unemployed did get a bomb plant, but still not really enough money, I would think, to buy here. Especially whenever you're probably wanting to play for the win. You don't want to be in a situation where you force up here, you lose. Cloud9 gets to 14. They get to 15 for free because you don't have any money. Then you have to just play for overtime. It's definitely worth your weight to just kind of chill out here, not buy too much. They do buy a little bit, but they stay around that 2k range average, so... Making sure they still get a nice full buy in the next round, which will basically be their last shot. They'll only get one real good buy here to try to see if they can't make this comeback a reality before it's, you know, just going to be too difficult as they're going to go for a real fast B play with these pistols. Kusta blinds everyone on his team. He's actually just going to sit. He's stuck. He tried to get out, but he was completely stuck on the door frame. As Tarek. An easy 3k for him, but Cutler's Deagles are showing up. And Exotic, can he show it off a little bit? So he's able to get the first nose. There's another one player close for the nades and Skadoodle seals. I mean, he that ate that deal. grenade. That grenade yeah. landed in his mouth. What flavored grenade would you like? Uh, how about, I mean, I feel like no matter what flavor the grenade is, if it explodes, it's still not worth. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, I, yeah, I guess that's a fair answer. You're kind of outfunking me there, didn't you? So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> It just kind of stinks that you're one way to win that round is that pot flash working and you kind of just swarming and, and getting and overwhelming people with pistols, but then the team flash happens instead and no one is even able to get out of apartments. But now they're on to the full buy, and again, this is basically last chance for them to try to make something happen here on Mirage. They're going for some mid-control. Tark is cheeky. He's had that smoke forever, and now he's going to push. He gets one in the tank and it's going to to clean it up. Stewie. Doing his own little janitorial work as he peeks under pass and finds a frag against Ethan and Kusta. I mean, that is just, that's hard it's to It's a swallow. nightmare. Yeah. Ethan will try to make a play, but it's too easy to just peek him. He doesn't care. Flash in, peek on it, full trust in the teammate CT. And it leaves Kusta a little, a little dazed and confused, although he will find a Stewie. And he has the bomb, so he's going to be able to get up towards Cat. Automatic will hear this. He pushed all the way out. B apps. So it depends if Cena really want to face him. I just want to keep him contained, really. I know he's on cat now, so Rush will make sure he can't come up connector or escape mid. Skadoodle has CT spawn on lock, so he can't get through window room into CT. And they have a player sitting over towards B, making sure that he can't get up cat. So, I mean, they have all their bases covered. All the bases covered, but can Kusa steal one? He'll slowly push up behind the smoke. And with 20 seconds, he can't get the drop on automatic. 15, Cloud 9. 10 rounds in a row is what's required from UFC. That's a lot of match points. Indeed it is. A lot of chances for Cloud 9 to win in regulation here. We'll take an absolute collapse to see in overtime at this point. But we'll see what UFC can do. I mean, that's just one of those things where what can you do? I mean, you go for mid-control and you lose every fight there. You know, you basically have, you know, Tarek pushing up, kills you. A good flash comes in at top mid, so you can't even trade Tarek properly. Then Skadoodle's waiting there with an op. There's no more smoke and window, so he's getting free reign. And then you have Stewie doing Stewie things in underpass. So they just didn't even get started in that round. Skadoodle, pop some shots for the smoke. No one connect. Let's do a whole connector. Yeah, it's automatic. The smoke pops to cover off. That was automatic smoke, I believe. Be true. Stop that push from the T's on towards his position. Had a little crossfire with Stewie. He is just now going to hold his palace position. 
And again, it's good to shuffle back and hold murder hole. They don't want to play anyone in window. High probability of getting caught out there, especially if they do a quick play. Because those bullets are nearly off the mark from landing on towards Stewie. And Tarek will be the first to fall. He peeks catwalked. But perhaps they think that's the catwalk player. Automatically hang around the ladder room. He'll get one. Stewie will falter and fall as Ethan's looking for this headshot onto automatic. Dancing, dodging, and ducking. That's Skadoodle. Simply gonna peek mid. He one escaped up catwalk, but he finds a player. Nectar out to the Deagle finds Ricks, and it's Kusta alone all of a sudden. With 40 seconds, Skadoodle knows the bomb's down. Catwalk, he spotted it as he killed that player. And Kusta has a flash. He needs to get a 3k. Vice versa for Skadoodle. It's gonna be a pretty big timing thing. Did he spot the gun barrel? Kusta misses, Ooh. and Skadoodle takes advantage. 16 5.